Hey, what's going on, boys and girls? Uh, this video, as you can tell, some reasons I use Linux. Now, there's been a lot of debates about some of the videos I've done in the past about, oh, well, if all you do is criticize it, why do you use it? I'll get into that. Personally, for me, probably the first reason it's not tied to any one company. It's not tied to Microsoft. It's not tied to Mac OS or Apple or any one company. Now, certain flavors, yes, they're tied to one company. Fedora is tied to, you know, Red Hat or, you know, Rel. Ubuntu is essentially tied to Canonical. Now, there's a lot of stuff that are tied to companies. That doesn't bother me so much. What bothers me is the fact that it's tied to one company. At least there's 350 different distributions that I can actually choose from. So, the fact that it's not tied to that one particular company is gold to me because I don't I, between Google, Microsoft, Apple and all these other companies they have enough info on me I don't want to keep giving more and more of my computing stuff that I do day to day to more people I kind of get tired of uh, targeted ads after a while <laughs> so that, that's probably the biggest reason um, it, and it's always good to have a plan B uh, Plan B, Plan C, Plan D. And there's always a good reason to have a backup plan. And in order to do that, why not actually do it? Instead of just talk about doing it, I actually do it. Um, so that way, if my Windows partition ends up frying out and I can, can't get back into Windows, things like, yeah, I'm not going to have access to all my Steam games, but at least I'm not going to lose my entire Steam collection or my entire GOG collection or my entire, you know, it's not like if it's like you play, which is Windows only, that the entire game is essentially oh, you're screwed, your account's gone. Same with uh, Origins and whatever games they might decide to make available on uh, Mac, which is just few and far between. So, I like having that option, and that's why I choose to use that option. Um, which gets me into the second point. <laughs> I can get stuff that meets the hardware. How many remember when Netflix came out? They backtracked on Windows Vista. They tried installing Windows Vista Basic, even that was too heavy. So they went back to Windows XP. That kind of conundrum is not necessarily a thing that Linux to me presents. Um, using the netbook example, I have a HP Mini Note 2140. Windows runs like dog on it. Most heavy Linux distributions run like dog on it because of the processor. But you look around enough, you can find distros that actually fit that hardware. Things like the Manjaro Netbook Edition work for it. They have CPU optimizations, they, the UI is light, and it is not a one-size-fits-all approach. That is my biggest gripe with things like Windows 10, or Win, uh, Windows 8, Windows 7, Mac OS. Those are my gripes. I hate the one-size-fits-all approach when you're trying to make something work on something that it's not meant to. This is like back in the days of Windows, old school Windows mobile phones, when you were essentially trying to cram a desktop design into like a Samsung phone or an HTC Diamond or any of those type of phones. That was a painful experience for anybody who used those for the most part. Unless you had probably the HT, uh, HTC, I think it was 3D Touch or whatever it was called at the time before it became um, Sense UI that those were painful because it was a one-size-fits-all approach and it doesn't work and that's what i really hate and that's why i really prefer the linux way of doing things and it's not for just you know customization is great but it's more about meeting the needs of the hardware to me not so much the ui customization and all that stuff because then on the flip side you can talk about ui customization but also the lack of solid toolkits and solid UI design the only distros that seem to do that are pretty much elementary OS 
Third reason, let's not let's talk about this in a little bit different light. Um, there's always this thing about antivirus and you don't need it on Linux. That is a load of crap. What I will say about AV and on Linux, it is less of a concern, but it is still a concern that should be brought there. <laughs> Again, you're not tying yourself to one company, which is great, um, at least when it comes to the Linux options available. Personally, for me, I use Clam AV. does most of what I need. Uh, and at least it's a open source way of doing stuff. Um, again, you're not tied to that one particular company. You're not tied to Kapersky or McAfee or whatever they're calling it now, or uh, Norton or whatever one on Windows or Mac OS you might use. You're not tied to that. And personally for me, I'm not sure if the AV companies are a help or a hindrance sometimes, to be brutally honest. Um, some people would say it's a Ponzi scheme. I say I don't know, but at the end of the day, the fact that I'm not trusting, I don't trust a company to be that far into my system. And that's, because realistically, if you look at it, we're trusting these companies to really be in our systems like deep down at our hardware and some of the stuff they might do is not always the prettiest and it should be cause for pause and concern at least this way if I decide to look at code you can there's a certain level of like transparency that you don't get with companies and that that's really the biggest thing for me as far as like the stuff with like AV and that kind of stuff Let's talk uh, my fourth reason. The fourth reason, it saves me time. I hate installing Windows. I hate reinstalling Mac OS. I, <laughs> Linux, I have a dedicated machine that I blow away partition after partition after. You know how many times I just reinstall a system 20 minutes later after updating, or once it's an uh, older Arch distro, um, it, it's up and running. And the default out of the box experience for the most part is functional fine I can get day-to-day -day with it for 99% of what I use the internet for and use a computer for it. so to me it's a time saver um, most of the defaults that I use in Linux I've used Linux long enough to know pros cons differences expectations you know I don't expect audacious to ever be Banshee or I don't expect Banshee to ever be like Rhythm Box. The simple fact is yeah, my expectations have been so tempered that I can work with whatever I'm put in front of me essentially. And the fact that it's just a 20 minute system and go is such a time saver to me as opposed to like having to reinstall Windows or Mac OS or it, it, there just seems to be less headaches to me. Now, I'm not saying there aren't headaches. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Broadcom, and sometimes you're, you in NVIDIA with your drivers and, you know, uh, Intel and some of your drivers at times when you want the mic Intel microcode stuff or uh, the updated Mesa drivers and stuff. There tends to be issues from time to time. But for the most part, the default out-of-the-box experience usually works. And you can find distros that make that even easier by adding codecs or by shipping the NVIDIA proprietary and um, AMD drivers with it. There are a lot of ways to mitigate stuff even more. And if you want a distro that throws everything at you, you can find those. Uh, Ultimate, Ultimate Edition is one of them. Um, and Terragos lets you choose your desktop environment as you're installing. There's so much you can do. So, the time saving is the biggest thing. And probably the last reason, and it is the last reason, I can't critique what I don't use. I claim, people, the thing that bothers me about a lot of tech channels, they claim to be these big fans of technology, but they have blinders on to like 98% of the tech that's around them. You know, you got guys that'll focus on Windows only machines and are, you know, I'm only looking at laptops and I'm not looking at tablets and phones. That's great if that's what really interests you. 
But know that you're limiting your demographic, you're limiting your knowledge. And for me, I've used Linux long enough. I've been a tech fan long enough to understand that you have to be open to using it and you have to use it in order to critique and criticize and to help improve the system. And that is something that not a lot of people do anymore. You got Linux users who only use Linux and that's great and I understand that, but on the same note, you come, you kind of become complacent in understanding where other people are coming from with their tech. Now, for me, I see that as a limitation. Some of you might not see it that way, and that's perfectly fine. But for me, that is a very big limitation because I will not be able to give people the best option available to them if I'm speaking from ignorance. Have I used, example, have I used iOS in probably the last four releases? No, so I'm probably not the most qualified person to actually talk iOS. I can tell you what I know of up to that point of the last I used it. Have I used BlackBerry 10? Yes. Have I used it since 10.3? Nope. I can speak of of it up to 10.2, but you you see what I'm saying? I can only you can only talk about what you know. And a lot of people and a lot of the people that I see do these type of videos don't even know what they're talking about because they don't actually use it like use it use it don't try to incorporate it as a daily driver of whatever they're doing in their life and they're limiting their they're limiting themselves and to me that is it's just ignorant to do so people have asked why i use linux those are i guess you could say my top five reasons why i use linux so you guys know what to do rate it subscribe peace